Welcome to Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. This is a weekly podcast that is unique uh, content uh, from the week that was Rick and Bubba. Uh, the Rick and Bubba show is a radio show. For some of you that don't know that, uh, you can find out more by going to Rick and Bubba, spell out the word and dot com. Uh, we do a live five hour show Monday through Friday. Uh, and if you'd like to know how to get that, go to Rick and Bubba, spell out the word and dot com. But Bubba, today, Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, is going to be a little experimental. Yes, it's going to be a little different today. Rick, uh, we had a guest schedule for Rick and Bubba University. They canceled on us within an hour of starting uh, to record this podcast. So uh, we decided that we would try something a little different. and something that a lot of people who do podcasts cannot do, and that is take live phone calls. So we told uh, our audience that we would be taping at a particular time, and they have responded. We have a full bank of phone calls. So we thought this would be a little more intimate uh, uh, setting for us to take phone calls and talk to the audience. Yeah, we're, we're just hanging out. You know who our guest is today, Bubba? The world. Uh, yeah, the world. <laughs> so let's start. TJ is out of the great state of Kentucky. You, you, All of you will be dictating what we'll talk about today. So we'll it, bounce all over the we'll place. We'll bounce all over the place. TJ, what would you like to discuss on Rick and Bubba University? So I have uh, two theological-related questions for you guys. Okay. First, was the American Revolution a violation of Romans 13? Okay. And then, and secondly, to go more present day with it, is having more than eight family members in your home for Thanksgiving a violation of Romans 13, if that <laughs> is your governor's current mandate? Well, okay. We'll start with the first one, which is much deeper. Well, let's do the second one because that, that's probably the easiest answer. Uh, if it is against the law, if you've been told to do this, is having more members in your house, is that uh, blaspheming God? And the and the answer of that would be no. So if the law where you live says you can only have this many people in your home for Thanksgiving, then you would, as a follower of Christ, you would follow that law. Now, if they said you can't celebrate Thanksgiving, no giving thanks to God, or you can't go to church uh, and worship God as mandated, or you can't talk about Christ and you you can't make disciples, uh, then we would not follow uh, those laws. So so that one's pretty easy. If it is the law of your state uh, that you can only have eight members, then as a Christian you should only have eight members. But Rick, I, I think we need to point out it, in some of these states it's not a law. That's right. It, now, it's it's a suggestion. it's a strong suggestion. Yes. Yeah, so and it all depends on what ruling authority passes it down because of the type of country we live in. Is it a governor? Is it a president? Is it a county commissioner? Is it a mayor? It gets real sticky, to be honest with you. So we try to follow the laws the best we can unless it violates God's law. So try to stay within the guidelines that your state's giving you. Yeah, and, but if it's, if it's just a suggestion, then you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, now let's get to the revolution. And I've had a, a number of emails mm-hmm. about this, but you have to remember what was at the heart of the revolution. I mean, we had pastors in churches removing their robe to reveal that they had the Continental uniform on, and they said, the men of this church, we need to go fight. Now, why did they say that? Uh, For religious freedom. They they were not, they didn't think that they had to follow an order from the Church of England because the Church of England had created a version of God that many of these pastors disagreed with. They did not like the theology. They did not want to be told on the whims of the king or the queen whether they would be Protestant or whether they would be Catholic. And they wanted the freedom to worship the one and only living God the way that they deemed theologically sound. And at the root of the Revolutionary War was religious freedom, which would be a God-sanctioned uh, war to fight. And I think, too, uh, Rick, you have to point out that while I think they were in their rights to do that, uh, they also would face the consequences of doing that. Oh, yeah. And that was many, many people play, paid a tremendous price. Uh, they lost their lives. They lost their property. They lost the lives of their family members, their children, their neighbors. And uh, while the country was successful at getting independence, there was a high price to pay for it. Yeah, and, and they were willing to pay it. But at the root of it, remember we've revised history quite a bit, was the pursuit of religious freedom to worship God and what they, they, they completely believed was biblically correct versus the Church of England that they thought was apostasy. So uh, we continue. Thanks on that. Great question. Yep. Uh, Allen in North Carolina. Showed great depth. Uh, yep. uh, Allen in North Carolina. Allen, yep. go ahead. 
Yeah, so, hey, uh, love y'all show. Um, you. I will tell you a little bit about me. I'm a troop master for a group called Trail Life. You might be familiar yeah. with. Yeah, yeah we are. Sure. Yeah, and so, uh, by the way, we gave away your manhood book at one of our leadership meetings. Oh, great. So, Wonderful. Yeah, so we're having adult training coming up uh, in, later in the month, and we're going to ask all of our leaders leadership tips. So my question to you guys are, what is leadership? And give, me, give us three tips that you would say are good tips for leadership. Okay. Uh, Bubba, you want to start? I've got some I can hit on. Uh, well, I, I think one of the things that's overlooked, and this is just me, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not speaking for Rick on this, I think that you have to be careful that if you are in leadership, you don't try to be in leadership in every aspect of your life. I think a good leader also has to be a good follower in other parts of their life. Because if you're just trying to be a leader all the time, it looks like it's more about you than the cause that you're actually doing. So you, there's times to be a leader and there's times to be a follower. And I think if you're a follower, it a actually will help you in times that you need to be a leader because you know the kind of things that help you to be a good follower. Yeah, so now let's use that end tip. I'll, I'll use Bubba's theme because he's right. Uh, the model that is perfect, would you, you know, I don't know if you're a man of faith or, or what, but you would say that when – I say this in, in, the, in the men's ministry program that we have. If you want the perfect example of how to be a man or how to do anything, how about when God did it? And so we were shown by Jesus, who had all authority in heaven and earth, we were shown that servant leadership is the correct version of leadership, meaning a true leader, like Bubba said, understands what it's like to be a, follow, a follower, and they should have all humility, and you never ask people, that you've been placed in authority over to do things that you yourself are not willing to do. Uh, a great example of this is, you know, I, I saw in my father, who, who, who was given a lot of responsibility at a very young age. He was an athletic director and a head football coach when he was in his 20s. Uh, and I remember an equipment salesman coming in to see him about selling equipment, and my dad, who was the athletic director and the head coach, was cleaning the toilets. Uh, and when asked why he was cleaning the toilets, he said, because it's my turn. Uh, so – I think it, that doesn't mean you have to, you know, it, just like Jesus washing feet, uh, you know, he says, I'm not, I'm not, it, washing your feet is not beneath me, so washing each other's feet should not be beneath you. Uh, so it's a sacrificial servant type leadership. I think the other thing is understanding that, that there should be a great mix of, of holding people accountable, but also encouraging people. Bad leadership is the man or the woman that you only hear from when you're doing something wrong. All they ever do is point out what you're doing wrong, and they never encourage you and say, hey, you know what? Great job. Hey, what you did today was fantastic. So you got to have encouragement uh, mixed with discipline, uh, and I think the other thing is you must be consistent. Uh, a leader has to be consistent. A leader that's all over the road, meaning they don't have any integrity. I notice you're saying that we should do these things, but we're looking in your life, and we don't see you doing them. Uh, you talk to us about, uh, about how we need to be disciplined in this area of our life, but you're not disciplined in that area of your life. I, I think that uh, you have to live a life of integrity uh, as a leader too, or if you don't, then people might fear you, but they'll never respect you. So ho hopefully those are helpful. Uh, let's go to Sonia in Alabama. Sonia, welcome to the program. Yes. Hi, Rick and Bubba. I love you guys. I love what y'all stand for. Thank you. And I appreciate everything y'all do uh, for – uh, the public out there, and uh, my question is for Bubba. Um, I must have missed the episode, and I wonder if it was this year or it might have been last year when it happened. I'm thinking that Bubba had some kind of injury that caused him to have to have some kind of repair surgery done, and I was just wondering how he was doing from that, and I missed it. I was just wondering what the um, injury was and uh, how he's doing from that, and will he be able to exercise again? <laughs> Sonia, that's a long, that's a well, that's long a, that's and a distinguished one. list. That's a big one. Uh, I, I will say this. During uh, my tennis playing days, I ended up having seven surgeries, mm -hmm. Ooh, five wow. knee surgeries, two foot surgeries. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, minor, uh, in the case of the foot surgeries, uh, the other were knee scopes and whatnot, had to repair an ACL. But uh, my last one was actually in – uh, December, January of last year, and just about the time I needed to ramp up and get out and start playing and doing some things against when the COVID hit and yep. we all had oh. to go into lockdown. So 
I, I, this year up till a couple of weeks ago has not been a very good exercise year for me. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and you may have missed what you're talking about. You did have a stent, too, also a heart stent. Yeah, had nothing, couple, do, yeah nothing to do with yeah, tennis. A couple but of I'm, years ago. Yeah. yeah so, okay. So, so wow. far, so good okay. on all that. So. <laughs> Great, great. Bless your heart. I just love to see you be able to get back out there and exercise. And I hope y'all can get Toby Mack uh, an interview with him on the show um, because I missed hearing what happened to his son, tragically. I don't know what what the tragedy was, but but I choke up every time I hear his songs. And I just love his music anyway. Yeah, he's fantastic. It's a good idea. We may try to get him if he's willing to be on. All right, we'll come back. More of your phone calls coming up on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. All right, let's continue now. Today's a little different uh, on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. We are talking to America. America is our guest. The world is our guest, and people are actually calling in on the podcast, and we're taking their topics. We had a guest scheduled for this week, uh, which fell through because of uh, some uh, responsibilities they had and could not record this week. So we said, let's take calls, and this time we can do the podcast 45-minute hangout and just talk about things that the audience wants to talk about in shallow has been waiting patiently. Shallow, welcome to Rick and Bubba University, the podcast you're on. Good morning, gentlemen. How are y'all? Good. Hey, um, my question is, how would uh, one go about ministering to their sister? And if I may, I would like to set up the scenario and brief, very briefly, and then uh, if you can, give me some advice on how to go about ministering to my sister, well, one of my well, younger sisters. Okay, we'll do our best. Go ahead. Um, I come from a very large family in rural Alabama, uh, and my dad, he went to be with the Lord. But anyways, he we went through a tough time with him. He meant, he was a minister of faith, firm believer, taught us the Bible, but also very abusive. I like to say he used also the Bible as a crutch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my one, one of my sisters struggles with it, and I just, you know, I'm in the process of ministering to her, but I would – I would like to hear your opinions on it and, and get some advice of how to go about administering to her because okay. she struggles with the fact of my father. Understood. So what's happened here is, sadly, and we see this a lot, the, the man of the house and who was supposed to be the spiritual leader gave a version, uh, and, and let's just say it, it's the version that a lot of, especially daughters, take on of God uh, is, is because God's called a father. But as the song said, God is a good, good father, and a perfect father, and I think you as her siblings and her family, you, you need to, to, if she's willing, to, to go into Scripture, and you need to be very, very well-versed on Scripture, and show her the inconsistencies of God the Father, uh, of, of, of God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit versus the things that she may have seen in, in the flawed presentation of, of her earthly father. She, she doesn't need to equate uh, imperfect, uh, sometimes uh, uh, fallen people uh, with a perfect God. And so I, I would, my approach would be don't try to justify things that maybe she doesn't understand or maybe things about daddy because that's an imperfect example. What you want to do is point her ultimately to perfection, which is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So I think that I would just almost do, and Bubba, see if you agree, kind of a reset and say this really isn't about daddy. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, absolutely. It, 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 it's about well, it's about it's about your redemption, and it's about who God is, not who Daddy was. Yeah, I think too many times we hang our our spiritual beliefs on a human being, right? And you not only with a, a dad or a mom or or something, but you, you also see it with pastors and ministers, and uh, you know they're going to fail. They're humans just like we are, and we make mistakes. So do they. And uh, sometimes they're a lot more under the spotlight than somebody else, especially if they're a high-profile person. But it, it's really not about people. It's about you and God and you and that bridge through Jesus back to God. And that's what you got to focus on because people will fail you every single time. And, and I, that's, that's moms, that's dads, that's spouses, that's kids. Uh, and we fail, we fail people too. So I don't think we can get hung up in that. It reminds me of something my mom used to say years ago when somebody would bring up something about somebody in the church as a hypocrite right. or they're doing, and they would use it for an excuse not to come to of church. Of course. Yeah. You know, so and so over there, he's a hypocrite. Right. He he does this on Sunday and he, you know, I see him out doing this and, uh, you know, whatever. They come up with all kinds of stories. And uh, she would jokingly say, Well, I'd rather 
go to heaven with a few hypocrites and to hell with a whole bus full of them. Right, exactly. So, you know, none of us are perfect. That's why we need a Savior. And be prepared for the part, because sometimes I've, I've, I've dealt, ministered to people who, who had bad parents or, or, or parents that mistreated them even, and, and they said, well, what about this part where it says, honor your mother and father? Uh, I don't think that my parent is worthy of honor. Well, this doesn't mean to condone your mother and father. It doesn't even say to love your mother and father. It says to honor them. And what that means is that you, your sister, will live your lives in a way that brings honor to whomever your parents are or were, whether they deserve it or not. They look at the way you live your life, and that brings honor to them because of the honor that you're ultimately trying to bring to your heavenly father. It does not mean that the way that they've done things is okay. It doesn't mean it's condoned and it doesn't even call for us to love our parents. It says to bring honor to them. Yeah. And and to that point, I don't want to draw it out too far, but I I know cases where you've had a a kid grow up in a home that was not perfect, Right. that the dad was far from perfect in a lot of cases. And we'll use a dad in this example, maybe and a daughter, they didn't have the greatest relationship. Well, the daughter followed a, a Christian walk, did what she was supposed to do, the way you were supposed to do it. You know, she got the bah humbug from her dad and yeah. all that stuff, but she kept doing it. But at some point in, in their, their life later on when the, the father got older, he, he came to know God because of seeing her yeah. and the way she acted and the fact that she didn't hold a grudge against him. She was non-confrontational. Dad, love you. Don't agree with that. I'm doing what I do. I'm a grown up. Yeah. So and and that meant a lot. So I think that's the end goal that we we try to to show God's love to people and and that they they have a life changing experience. Yeah. And don't let the adversary use bitterness toward an earthly dad to keep you from the perfect father. Yeah. Remember, so, yeah. the devil's going to try to tangle you up in all kind of stuff. Just try to cut through the minutia of all of that and remember the big picture. Thanks, Shiloh. Appreciate your call. Uh, we continue uh, to John in Alabama. John, welcome to Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Go ahead. Wow. This is an honor, guys. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be on Rick and Bubba After Dark. I mean, <laughs> you know, That's um, good. You know, all the other callers can hang up. I'll be here a minute. I'm just kidding. I, I'm mm-hmm. be respectful of your time. I've been with the show ever since it started. When I graduated high school at Sachs High School in Anniston, Alabama, wow. I started working at started working at Gold's Gym as the opening guy. So I would open the gym every day at 430. And the first thing I would do is I'd cut on the radio and I'd put on Rick and Bubba. And that was great up until the off season because Kevin Green, the pro football player, owned half of the gym with another guy named yeah. Isaac Russell. Oh, yeah. yeah. Know them and both. I'm, yeah. I'm sitting there laughing, laughing myself hysterical. So are the other patrons of the gym. And Kevin Green walks in. He's a big man. And he's like, what is that? And I was like, it's Rick and Bubba. You know, and he was like, put on music. And I, I, I had to give in to his, his wishes on that. So, uh, but he, he grew to love the show over the office. He did. So. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, we had Kevin on a lot. Well, thanks for, all, oh, your, yeah. Yeah, thanks for your support for all the years that you've been uh, supporting what we do. We'll continue with your phone calls when Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, continues. When, when you start talking about underwear, uh, a, a lot of you are going, Rick, why are we talking about underwear? I'll tell you why, because your underwear could be more comfortable if you're not wearing Tommy John's. I mean, right now, the underwear that you're wearing could be more comfortable. And, and it's okay to talk about that. You don't have to be, you know, uh, say, well, I guess this is as comfortable as underwear I'll get. Rick, I'll say this. If you try Tommy John underwear, yeah. you're going to have a, a whole different opinion of underwear after you try it. Because I, I, I was that way. I was that way. Well, th- there, this Black Friday, you need to fight cold with cozy in Tommy John underwear, loungewear, pajamas, and bras. Now, you can shop their Black Friday sale right now and give the gift of comfort to everyone on your list. Uh, or maybe for yourself, it'd be a great gift for you. With Tommy John men's and women's loungewear. Now, you're going to love this. If you got old sweatpants you're wearing that are nasty, forget those. Tommy John loungewear is so soft and guaranteed to fit perfectly, just like the underwear, with the same level of that comfort and innovation that goes into everything that Tommy John makes. Plus, Tommy John's loungewear, pajamas, and underwear come in limited edition sets, perfect for gifting, but they will. these do sell out quick. So here's what you do. There's no risk with Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or it's free guarantee. Shop Tommy John's Black Friday sale right now to make sure your gifts arrive by the holidays. Go to TommyJohn.com slash Rick Bubba. We'll get you 20% off site-wide. Get 20% off for a limited time only at TommyJohn.com slash 
Rick Bubba. That's TommyJohn.com slash Rick Bubba. Site has all the details. Well, you're back, uh, Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, taking phone calls on this edition, talking to America. No guest. You know who the guest is? <laughs> America. There, America. Richard <laughs> has been waiting, and, and Richard, you've called us, and welcome to Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Hey, good morning, guys. Good to be on with you. Thanks. Hey, uh, so if, if uh, you may bear with me for about 60 seconds, I'd like to tell a quick Rick and Bubba story and, and ask you a question that goes along with sure. it. Sure. Uh, first time I listened to the show on my own was September 11, 2001. Mm. Um, and, you know, you guys, I turned it on. I was waiting on my boss to get to work, and you guys were like, hey, there's planes crashing at the towers. I don't know if there was a trauma in that moment or whatever, but I didn't listen to Rick and Bubba again for 12 or 13 years after that. Wow. And fast forward 2013, 14. My wife and I, you know, had been I've been married. My wife and I were trying to have children, and we had just recently lost twins in pregnancy, mm. and we were destroyed. We were we were shattered, yep. and you know, we had been going to church and and you know and and trying to do do that, trying to follow Christ. Uh, but the one day I drive for my job. One day I turned on the radio in January. And it was the first time I heard about Bronner and, and your testimony through that. And I truly believe that, that God challenges those that he loves to make them better. And he makes beauty out of ashes. And something I would like to know is you guys personal testimony on, you know, I know that man church is growing and, and you've got all these irons in the fire and God's using your ministry, but I would like to hear a personal testimony about how God, continues to change you and the other guys on the on the on the show uh, for the good and i don't know i know it all kind of changed that day with you guys i just want to let you know that it all kind of changed that way with me too we you know I, I used that testimony and it encouraged me and and we began putting our lives back together now we have two children we're faithful active in church growing in christ every day I'd like to hear how you guys have continued to grow since that day through that whole situation. Okay, thanks. Uh, I can tell you with me, probably the biggest thing that's changed from then is I was one of these guys that took the attitude that I was only going to know so much about Scripture. Hey, I don't like to read. I don't like to study. You know, and it's just not my thing. You know, and I'll try to listen to the Bible and audio when I can. Of course, I never really did. But but that event in tw- in 2008, at one time, if I was being completely honest, it, 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 except for that moment when I was put in a position where I didn't have anywhere else to go, and I was growing, but it was it was almost like I'd gotten to the point where I've been redeemed, I've been justified, I, I, I'm very confident of my eternity. But, you know, I used to have this attitude, I remember with my grandmother, who's, you know, a saint, I remember thinking that, that she and I had the same faith, she was just more into it than I am. Uh, only to discover through when it, when my faith was tested <laughs> that no, my grandmother was what it looks like to be a disciple of Christ, and 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 what I was was a cultural Christian. So when when I was redeemed, when Sherry and I got married, and I was starting that process, the thing that happened from 2008 on, and and I think a lot of times with especially with men, we 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 have this vision that. Um, you know, we got to try to find this new code of conduct. I remember thinking immediately, I got to have this new code of conduct, this new conduct, this new self control. And then I was introduced to John 15. And John 15, I think, is probably what is changing my life the most current day. And Jesus says, You can do nothing apart from me. Abide in me, and I will abide in you. And, and then I will produce the fruit from your life that really is the power that flows from me. And, you know, he says in John 15, and this fruit will prove that you are not my converts, not my believers. It'll prove that you are my disciples. And, and, and discipleship has been a game changer in my life. When, when I started studying the Spirit of the Disciplines by Dallas Willard, there, there just became from the Holy Spirit this hunger for the Word of God, this hunger to know more and, and to grow. And, and, and I really thought to myself, how does any man – claimed to want to be excellent in his work, excellent in this, and he claims excellence from his football team and his hobbies and all the things that he really cares about. And why are men, especially Rick, why are you so comfortable being mediocre in your faith? Where, and, and then I realized that's not really – that's selling the power of Christ really, really low. And I just developed this hunger, 
not because I came up with some new game plan. I, I, I developed this hunger because I pursue Christ. And, you know, I, I, the, the, the verse that saved my life was James 4, 7 and 8. Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Come near to me and I'll come near to you. Well, I'm a man. That's action. Submit, resist, come near. And, and I think I'd been sold almost this, we are saved by grace through faith. But I think I had ignored the faith part. Yeah, it is by grace, but it's by faith. What, what does this mean by faith? Well, as you start studying Scripture, that's a faith of action. Not to earn salvation, but the pursuit of Christ is that you seek me, you'll find me. Abide in me, you know what that means? That I'm in total agreement with him, that I, that I rest in him. Uh, you know, First John says, uh, those that abide in Christ do not live a life of continuous, perpetual, deliberate sin. Uh, so I think the biggest, uh, we're not talking about perfection. I mean, certainly mistakes are still made, but they really are mistakes and stumbles now. They're not a justification of sin in my life. And I can honestly say that everything in my life that I'm not afraid to call sin, Christ removes. So I think just the maturation and the grasp of, of, the, of scriptures and understanding God has been the thing that's changed the most about me. I think, um, very well put, Rick. Mm-hmm. I, I think, too, uh, you know, Bronner's death, I, I've referred to it a lot of times as a circuit breaker where You know, we were moving along. The show was moving up. Uh, You know, we were very focused on how that was growing. And, you know, the circuit breaker to it made you kind of slow up and and say, okay, let me let me reevaluate here. What what are we doing? Why are we doing it? How are we doing it? Where where am I? Where is my walk? Is it getting pushed to the side? Um and and it was uh you know it was a course correction for for me personally and uh, we had to look at uh, you know a lot of things we were doing and reevaluated and and Betty too and our kids and uh, uh, you know it uh, the, far as as professional uh, things happening with a show I, I would say not as important uh, we always want it to grow but it wasn't the priority that it was before. And we started doing uh, a lot more uh, looking inside, and we've had things since then too um, that, you know, we, we, we start searching, God, how can you use me in this, and what do you want me to do, and, and what am I wasting time on, and how can I, how can I curb this in and, and, and adjust this? And um, we've tried to focus too more on some personal relationships and helping some people and be able to, to, to guide them through some things. Uh, I, I think Rick, what you're doing, is, you know, maybe more in the public eye. Uh, and we certainly have a long way to go. There's a lot mm-hmm. more we need to be doing. Uh, Betty and I have been talking about this a lot lately, just looking for, um, you know, are, are we, you know, and I think that inter Checking is a good thing. We all need to do that. Where am I where I need to be? Where, you know, how do you need to adjust this? I think when you're asking those questions, it prevents you from getting off in the weeds too far. Yeah, and it really goes back to this and just what Bubba's saying. I think sometimes we get so caught up in, you know, how does this process take place? And that's going back to that abide again. I think as the closer you get to Christ, the more you get in his word, you develop a hunger for this. Let's face it, let's face it we're all experts on things we care about. <laughs> we're all experts on things that we deem of value. And I think to Bubba's point, what we deem of value has changed radically. And, you know, I love that part when Paul's sitting there in first Corinthians 15, nine and 10. And he says, you know, I shouldn't even be an apostle. Let me tell you, I'm a wretched, wretched man. I should not be given the platform to do anything uh, by the way that I had lived my life. And I, and I'm so thankful for the, the, the forgiveness that I've been afforded and the grace I've been afforded. And Paul said that he said, I persecuted the church. So I work harder than any of the apostles, and the only thing good about me is because of the grace that I've been given. But he says something that I think was missing in my life, and I think sometimes you see it missing in people's life, is that Paul then says, but that grace will never be in vain. I I don't want God to ever look down at the grace he gave me and go, well, there wouldn't not much happen there. Uh, You know, and and, and so that that grace will never be in vain. And, uh, And I think we've just prioritized and, Life is is simpler now. Uh, like Bubba said, what's important, what what's not important. Uh, I don't live a life of fear or anxiety uh, because you know we face some difficult things. 
and I think I understand why we're here more than I ever have before, and I keep working, and Bubba keeps working, we all do, on how you balance this, but ultimately it's going to be what happens for the kingdom that matters uh, when it's all said and done. So so thank you for that, and I appreciate you hearing your testimony too. Steve in Wisconsin. Steve, go ahead. Welcome to Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Hey, guys. Uh, absolutely love your show. I watch it every morning on YouTube. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And, and uh, one of the things I really enjoy is during the commercial time, y'all show all these different pictures, uh, personal pictures of y'all. And uh, one I, I re- recall seeing was uh, Bubba. It looks like you're in some kind of a graduation robe. And I'm, unless I'm mistaken, it looks like some kind of advanced degree. So I just wanted to ask you about that. Well, I, I'm not sure exactly what he's talking about. The honorary talking, doctor is, is, is that what it was yeah, from? That's what uh, about. Yeah, we we were very fortunate last year to get an honorary doctorate from Jacksonville State University, where I went to school, and uh, we were very proud of that uh, that they thought enough to do that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think they felt guilty because Rick got a stadium, and uh, <laughs> that's my so dad's name on that, the stadium. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> I, I think it do, was a I, make good on that. I and, didn't uh, do anything to have my name on the stadium. I promise you, except bad. But yeah, that's that's my dad. But yeah, no, Bubba, very much deserved. Uh, th- there's no doubt, man. You being in your hometown. And that being the university that, oh, it, that it is was, there, I was very honored. I, I not deserving, but very honored for sure. That was a lot of fun. No, nah, very well, much. That's deserving. great. Uh, well, let, let me just give a, a little bit of a shout out to Rick. Uh, I've I've emailed you before, and I've told you this, but I want everybody else to know this. You are absolutely one of the best lay Bible teachers I've ever run into, and I try to get as many of my friends to watch you as I can. Thank you. That's that. I, I don't even have words for that. Uh, just knowing where I, it shows you the power of God's what it does. I promise you that. You know, some people yep. say I don't know if I believe in God, but what He's done with those two, I guess I, you, that's got to be miraculous. And and you, and I hope you see that that really is miraculous. And it's very very kind of you to say that. I yeah. appreciate that, sir. Um, I do want to? Uh, we'll come back. And we'll take some more phone calls. Wrapping up the last fifteen minutes of this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. All right, Bubba. What if I said Bowling Branch to you? Uh, well, you you said a lot right then. Did you know that three former U.S. presidents all used Bowling Branch? That's uh, and look, they want the best. Yeah, they do. Uh, Deserve the best. Yeah, and these presidents agree that Bowling Branch sheets are the softest, most comfortable, pure organic cotton sheets on earth. Uh, the cotton is rain fed. It's pesticide free. It carries the highest organic certification. And you know that's why it is so soft. If you've never snuggled into these things. Uh, you will immediately see the quality and, and the difference. And uh, and here's what's cool. Since they sell directly to us, from the farmers to us, the sheets start at Bowling Branch at $160. Uh, they're they're $1,000 quality for a fraction of the price. Plus, you sleep on them for a month, Bubba. You know what? You don't like them? Man, get your money back. Send them back. So right now, let's do this. Y'all, y'all make the move, all of you here on Rick and Bubba University, the, the podcast. Get $50 off any sheet set at bowlingbranch.com with the promo code Rick Bubba. B-O-L-L and branch.com and our promo code is Rick Bubba. That's $50 off. Bowlingbranch.com promo code Rick Bubba. See bowlingbranch.com for all the details restrictions may apply. All right, so we're back on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Bubba, I've been loving this right Yeah, this is fun. We're, We're just talking. You're our guest, America. We're taking phone calls. This is the beauty, as Bubba said, of us having a radio show that's also on YouTube. Uh, so we prompted callers to call us, even when we weren't live, uh, to tape this uh, this podcast. And boy, have you delivered! Uh, <laughs> so let's um, let, let's continue. Let's go to John in Alabama. John, welcome to Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Your question. Hey guys, really enjoy the show. Thanks for taking my call. Our pleasure. I wanted to ask uh, the six of you guys that we we hear doing the show now. Obviously, get along. You have a good time. You really enjoy what you're doing. I just wanted to ask, other than you and Greg, obviously, Rick, <laughs> being brothers, but through the years, has there been something that happened, a, an argument or an issue that come up that somebody actually got mad at the other one of the other guys and you, something had to work through, or is it just great, good, good all the time? Bubba, I know we've been asked this before, and I'm not trying to dodge the question, but I'm being, I mean, there might be a little uh, today. I didn't really agree with that. I don't know about that, but that nothing that that really speaks, I, you know, maybe when Bubba and I one time very early on, 
I think I got mad about payroll one time because yeah, you, that, that's but, what I was thinking. Yeah, okay, the okay, only one I could think. Yeah, you, of. you uh, went home and you were sleeping. You forgot to go by the bank, and we were making so little money. We, <laughs> you know, I tried to put my check through, and they wouldn't cash it. Uh, <laughs> was it that or the day I forgot the checkbook when it was payday? I can't remember. Uh, I, I, I remember I, I had to go home and get it one yeah, time. It was, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know why I had it at home. But, but we've I, never had one of those things where, like, I, I can honestly say, and I know shows that do this, and I, I hope it. I, you know, God forbid it would ever come to this. They do the show because they need to, not because they want to. And uh, right. and, and I, I don't think there's ever been a day, not for any long period of time. Somebody might have had a bad day or brought something in from home, yeah. wasn't in a good mood or whatever. But for the most part, I, there's never been a time that like the show was at odds. I, I would say if we've had a brush up, uh, you know, everybody goes home, we come back, and it's kind of reset the next day. It's never, it's never carried on. And the only thing I can think of was that day. We it was very early. We were in Gadsden, and we shared one office. We had desks that actually faced each other. Oh yeah, I remember. like you walk in, you went to the right, you got to Rick's desk, you went to the left. We didn't have to send email because <laughs> about what was going on because there wasn't a thing called email. You're right. And we both could hear each other on the phone. We couldn't both talk at the same time. So anything that was being done, the other one knew what was going on because they were sitting there listening to it. Yeah. And I think I, for, the, for some reason I forgot to check book or left it in a different car or something. I had to go home and get it, and Rick was mad, and uh, and then I was mad. I had to drive back, but yeah. that, I think that was about the, yeah. the the length of it, and it was all over by the next day. Yeah, we've been we've been very fortunate. You know, I hear sometimes marriages say, you know, we've never had a real argument, and and th- nothing of any consequence. We've been very yeah. fortunate about yeah. that. And uh, so we're trying to keep that record alive. Yeah, let's hope we do. Uh, Chris, <laughs> and Chris, this may be the reason why with your question. Chris, go ahead. You're on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Yeah, good morning, guys. Thanks hey, for hey but, my call. it's our pleasure. Yeah, I'm from originally from uh, Georgia. So I was recruited to play football in Alabama and uh, met my wife at school. And, and uh, so after graduation, we moved to her hometown, Gadsden. Mm-hmm. So we were, you know, we were newly married, and and uh, I got up one morning and just flipped over to, you know, one of the local radio stations, and and you guys popped up, and I thought, who in the world are these two guys? You know, and uh, so, you know, as you say, as you guys uh, say in the past, hey, just give us a little bit. And we'll grow on you. Yeah, yeah. Thirty days, <laughs> yeah. we'll put the weight days. on. After thirty that's days, if you still don't like us, it's over. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I'm, I'm still listening. Um, so my question is, when when we were playing, when I was playing football, right? The, we had a chemistry uh, camaraderie that you know a lot of guys don't get to experience that. Yeah. And I know guys. A lot of you guys have played, you know, sports. Have been around you know, athletics, you know, your whole life. And, you know, to me, when I listen to you guys, it is a true, you know, camaraderie. It's true chemistry, a love for one another. Um, that is that is that the way it is when you go to commercial break, you know, ragging on each other, yeah. you know, playing jokes, you know, because when we get – when I go back and we get with our guys, it's like – you know, I hadn't seen some of my teammates in ten years, but we pick up like we 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 didn't see each other for you know a day or two. No, right? no doubt. Yeah, the chemistry has been there from the very beginning, and I don't think that's something that you can coach. Uh, no. You know, Bubba and I had a chemistry uh, on the air, and again, that doesn't mean I think sometimes people misunderstand that 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 Bubba and I and Greg and Speedy and and now for gosh, I guess the the shortest amount of time anybody's worked here has been twelve, thirteen years now. Yeah. Uh, because we have we've had very little turnover because of that chemistry. It, it, that means that we're all exactly the same. Now we're all very unique. And we have very very unique interests and personalities. But there's something about your point when it comes time for the game. There's a chemistry that has always been there. You know that Bubba yeah. and I kind of flow and, and talk, and we do have a lot in common when it comes to what we think is funny, uh, and 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 most and most everything politically and all that. But but there's a, a chemistry. That, that is with this bunch, and it's the reason why we don't really hire people. Helmsy may be the only exception, and it's worked out with him, that we actually hired somebody because we thought they had expertise in an area that we needed. Uh, even Adler was kind of a startup. I, I have some talent in this area, but I'm going to grow with you. Greg certainly 
the job he does here. He had no talent for uh, as far as far as the stuff he does off the air for you know making sure commercials air and record all this. Bubba, Bubba, you're was, making it sound like Greg has no talent. No, no. But what you're saying, he he didn't have that going into his it. chemistry. Yeah. To but what, he had a great work ethic. Yeah, his so. see the work yeah. ethic. I never, I was not concerned about. I knew Greg yeah. would work harder than anybody here. Speedy, hey, great, Alabama great. Power. Yeah, Alabama Power. Speedy's got a great work ethic. Helmsy does. Adler's tremendous work ethic. So you have to have a work ethic to be here. I think that would be one of our requirements. But you don't have to have a lot of expertise, and you don't really have to have a lot of talent. Uh, but because we certainly don't. But but the chem- but but the chemistry and the work ethic have to be there. And this team has it. It always has had it. Uh, and uh, and and it's just something that I think that God just blessed us with. It really, it really yeah. is. It really is not something we work on. And you know, yeah. I, I think a lot of times when you hear the term peer pressure, it, it's usually used in a negative connotation that you know people around you are going to shame you into doing something you don't want to do. Well, here we kind of have a positive peer pressure. You don't want to mess up because everybody gets <laughs> on you, and you don't want no. that. So you, I, you try to hold it in the road. High right? accountability, no doubt yeah. about it. You don't want to be the guy that dropped the ball. You oh, just no. don't. No. Uh, all right, we're getting close to wrapping up Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Dallas may have the perfect question to end it. Uh, Dallas, go ahead. Hey, guys. Well, lucky me. I got to listen to the whole podcast on being on hold. There you I, go. I good today. There you go. <laughs> um, so, guys, uh, when the day comes and Rick and Bubba has their final, uh, I guess, year, uh, the curtain call, as I would say, um, do you guys have plans um, – whether it's in your wheels to leave the show um, to the kids, or do y'all have plans to let Adler, Helmsy, Speedy kind of pick up where y'all left off? Because I don't know if Greg will want to hang around. Uh, <laughs> he, he may, he may want to, but I see Greg as a a guy. He's gonna when bro, Big Brother goes, he, he's gonna close that curtain too. So, what's y'all's opinion on that? Have y'all gave that much thought? Not not as much as we probably should, but but no, I I will say this. I, I'll speak for myself. I'll let Bubba go. This this is my intention. Of course, if the Lord changes that point of view, my intention. This is always what I've wanted to do for, for a living. Always. This isn't work to me. Uh, now sometimes you know it can be. I'm not saying I'm never tired, but if I can physically and mentally do what we do, I plan on continuing to do it. So if, if I were to leave, it would be because yeah. I physically or mentally just cannot do it anymore. And uh, and then, Bubba, you can hit that. But as far as the other guys, we always encourage them to develop their own, you know, uh, brand. Uh, you know, we, we have the kickoff hour yeah. going now. And we, we expect if Bubba and I get to where we can't physically, mentally, or desire to leave, that, yeah, that they would just continue with, the, with their own team. Yeah, I, I, Dallas. The way you phrase that question about the kids was almost like you're you're leaving a uh, a, a business that's working, <laughs> uh, and and you know we're we're only on the air because we have a contract to be on the air, and when yeah. that's up, okay. uh, yeah, you know it may not be our decision. Right, right. It's uh, right. You so, asked if when yeah. our decision. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but on our end, uh, you know, I, I would say you know I'm planning on being here at least for the next twenty years uh, because that's how long my mortgage is. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you you mentioned the kids. You know, I encourage my children, you know, to to develop their own way. And it doesn't mean that I don't help them. And it doesn't mean that I like. It, sometimes I might get my kid an interview, but I can't get him the job. You know what I mean? I I it's, yeah. it's, it's I'm teaching them that they have to make their own way. Now, if they develop develop their own brand and somehow you know growing up near this helps them. But the thing of hey, I'm gonna let my kids you know, go out and, and not get after it and just goof off and lay around, but don't worry, daddy's going to come up here and make everybody hire you. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I, I think that leads to a bad a bad environment. So I think if, if they want to do their own thing, I would certainly help them any way I could to promote what they were doing and, and something like that. But I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give them a, a life raft where they don't have to work. Uh, cause I, I, I think that won't serve them well going forward. But as far as the rest of the guys here on the show, I assume if Bub and I, for whatever reason, couldn't get a new contract, nobody wanted us anymore. Uh, maybe we did, you know, decide, Hey, I changed my mind. I think I am going to leave. Uh, I would expect them to be able to keep their own thing going. Really? No problem. Yeah. I, the guy, I will say this for the guys here on the show. Uh, they, you know, are very capable and, and different ones have turned down offers to do things at different times. So, I think they would be fine on their own uh, if they decide to do that at some point in time. 
Um, you know, as far as my kids, I have not pushed them into this industry. Uh, when they have showed interest, I said, I will help. Like you said, Rick, yeah, any way possible. Sure. They're still at that age where they're just, they, they don't know what they want to do. So they're looking at a lot of different things. So we'll see how all that plays out. But I've, I've encouraged them like you were saying, Rick, uh, you know, we're not all the same people. Right. And even with our kids, they, it doesn't mean they have the same interest, uh, right. like we do. Right. So I, I think they have to follow their own interest and their own love and desires like we have, and we're going to try to be there to support them. If, if one of them wanted to do this kind of thing, I would love it. Uh, if they don't, if they want to, you know, do whatever, they can grow trees, they can cut grass, they can, you know, run for president. I, I'll be all right with whatever they do as long as they get out and try to do something. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and their spiritual health is That's the most right. important thing. Yes, absolutely. You get that right, everything else will fall into place. Yeah. Well, this has been great. Did you enjoy this? I did. I, it was fun. I, 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 really, I, I want to thank the audience because we've had a full bank the whole time. Yeah. I mean, we could go, we could keep going. We got another 45 minutes worth of stuff, but unfortunately the files get too big to download. Yeah. So thank you for being with us. I, I hope you've enjoyed it and maybe we'll do this again. Yeah. And don't forget if you didn't get in today and you'd like to get in and talk to us, we do have the Rick and Bubba show that's uh, live, uh, you know, or maybe in your market somewhere, but to call in, it have to be live. So it runs live 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. Central time, Monday through Friday. To get all the details on where that happens, go to Rick and Bubba, spell out the word and.com. Bubba, great work. Thanks you for too, the call. sir. Harry Murdahl, nice work in there. And thanks to all of you for being on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast.